All right, so I know a lot of people are switching over to Sony from Canon. Um, I myself have moved off of Canon. I went to the Panasonic uh, GH4 pretty heavily. I have three of those. And then also into the uh, Sony camera bodies um, because Canon is just really falling behind on the features that they're giving us. Um, anyways, one of the true benefits of Micro Four Thirds or the Sony uh, FE mount is that you can use lens adapters. And the cool thing is that, you know, it's not just so you can adapt pretty much any lens out there like Canon lenses, but some of the adapters out there are gonna let you take advantage uh, of your camera system. So it's gonna really enhance your camera system. For instance, on the Micro Four Thirds cameras, you may want a speed booster. So that's gonna give you, you know, a wider field of view. Uh, for the A7R II that primarily shoots in crop mode for the best quality, you can also add a speed booster and get a little bit more uh, light in as well as you know wider field of view um, but on the sony a7s ii uh, this full frame camera you don't really need a speed booster so all you really need is a lens adapter and you know same goes with the micro four thirds and the a7r2 as well you can use just a plain lens adapter you don't have to have a speed booster um, and the reason i bring that up because one of the things that i've done myself is i've moved to mostly manual lenses um, and I have, you know, a lot of these Rokinons. I've also moved up to the uh, Zine cinema lenses. And I like working with the manual lenses for video a lot better than using um, photo lenses like, you know, the Canon photo lenses. Because, you know, as you know, the photo lenses, number one, you don't have control over the iris unless you have a smart adapter. So if you want to change aperture in one of these manual lenses, very easy to do. D-click, you know, smooth uh, aperture adjustments as well as focus throw. Um, these guys right here have a very long, smooth focus throw. So when you're focusing from one, uh, you know, point A to point B, it's gonna be very smooth. You'll be able to nail your focus as, as far as a photo lens, it's very short and sometimes you'll overshoot or, you know, you don't get enough movement where it looks smooth, it's very quick. Um, so anyways, uh, you know, these lenses here, manual lenses is the way I like to go and, um, you know, Moving to the cinema lenses is really just because they're mostly color match. So, you know, when you're cutting from one camera to the other, it doesn't look very different as far as contrast, sharpness, color, and all that stuff. So, um, anyways, I moved to a lot of manual lenses. Now, um, I bring up lens adapters because when you're going to these manual lenses here, uh, especially cinema lenses, you have to deal with ND filters on cameras like this. You know, the FS7 has it built in, but A7S2 uh, does not have built in ND filters. Now, a lot of you guys who are shooting S log, your base ISO is going to be 1600. And if you're shooting 120 frames a second, then your base ISO is going to be 3200, right? So even indoors, you almost need an ND filter indoors as well. Now, for lenses like this, you could probably throw on an ND filter, right? So this is a 77 millimeter, so you can throw a ND filter on here. But then when you go to change your lens again, you have to deal with uh, swapping over your ND filter. So one of the things that I really like with the A7S II is this Photo Deox ND Throttle. Now this is a lens adapter that adapts Canon lenses to the Sony A7S II body. Um, but inside of the lens, I don't know if you guys can see this here, is a variable ND filter. So if I rotate this here, you'll notice that it'll get darker. And then you just uh, rotate it again on the other way, and then it'll kind of open up. Now this will cut, putting this on, uh, will cut about a stop or two from of light that's coming into your camera, which to me is perfectly fine because, you know, even indoors you almost need an ND filter. So throwing this uh, lens adapter on with the variable ND filter built in, even indoors works perfectly fine. You know, you're at base ISO 1600 with S log. So it helps to cut that down already. But when you're outdoors is where it really shines because you can throw all your lenses on this adapter, never have to think about ND filters or matte boxes or anything like that. And you'll be able to dial in the right exposure while being able to take advantage of, you know, wide open aperture and uh, shallow depth of field. So, you know, obviously one of the problems with these cinema lenses is that there is no uh, filter threads on these lenses. And these are 114 mil diameter. So very large, you're not gonna find filters for that. Uh, so you have to deal with matte boxes and drop-in filters and, you know, all that stuff. So by putting the variable ND filter behind the lens, 
never have to worry about it. Swapping lenses all day long, uh, you know, even this one right here, even though you could put a filter on the front, you don't need to. You just throw this lens on your A7S II and you could just dial in your right exposure. Now, a lot of people will ask, you know, does it, uh, is there a reduction in sharpness? Is there any color cast? You know what? None that I've noticed. Uh, if you look on Amazon, the ND throttle here has gotten about four to five star reviews on Amazon. Um, I think it works really well, especially for cameras that are so sensitive like the A7S II where your base ISO is very high. Uh, you really need ND filters. And I think this is probably one of the best solutions out there. Very affordable. I think anybody who's shooting um, V-Log on the GH4 or S-Log on the A7S II, A7R II should really think about this. Now, look into this adapter. Obviously, you can do returns on Amazon. You can also do returns with Photo Deox. Just contact them. They have a very good return policy. I really suggest that you guys try it out because it's really going to smooth out your workflow. Now, it will work with um, Canon uh, EF lenses as well. Um, you just don't have control over your iris. And, you know, 24105 is great because it's image stabilization. But one of the good things about the A7S II is that it has in camera, in body image stabilization. So I don't really miss image stabilization from even lenses like this. Uh, but definitely the uh, ND throttle with the ND filter, variable ND filter behind the lens is really going to help you guys out. I think you guys should try it out. Contact Photo Deox. Um, again, they have a great return policy if you're not satisfied. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, again, uh, these lenses right here, I think is just great. It's just, it works better for me than photo lenses uh, for video. And, you know, I'm not really chasing the sharpest possible image, sharpest possible lens. You know, a couple of years ago, we had to deal with cameras that didn't have the same dynamic range as cameras today, didn't have the 4K resolution and detail that we have in cameras today. So, you know, image quality is um, is outstanding, even with subpar lenses like these Rokinons. I mean, I'm not saying they're bad. I, I've got some really, really great images. I know a lot of guys who shoot with very high-end cameras use Rokinons as well. So, you know, image quality is not bad. I'm not saying it's the best, but definitely usable and very affordable compared to, uh, you know, Canon EF lenses. So definitely look into manual lenses, um, but you'll need ND filters. Look into the ND throttle by Photo Deox. I think this combination here works really well with the um, A7S II, as well as cameras like the GH4 or, you know, A7R II. Cameras where you can adapt uh, or have lens adapters. The Canon mounts, even some of the Blackmagic cameras coming out with Canon mounts, not able to use lens adapters, so you're not going to be able to put like a variable ND on your Ursa Mini. I wish we could, but we can't. Um, but anyways, I think this is a great solution. This kind of you know, uh, really alleviates all those pains that you have when you have to stop, you know, cut down all the light coming into the camera so you can really take advantage of shallow depth of field. Anyways, um, I'll stop rambling, but I just really want to give a plug because this thing has been really useful. I, I don't see a lot of people talking about it, but you really should try it. I'll have some links below or on the blog at cheesycam.com.